community, to individuals and areas in Aquarius in this healing age. Namaste. All right. So let's turn. Again. All right. I'll know. Jump in. Beautiful. Sorry, guys. I don't know how that thing got switched back on. I'm supposed to. So let's start with turning the hands backwards, taking the kneeling knees wide, coming the body alive. Oh, yeah. It's been the elbow slightly. It's not easy. Probably. No, I'm going to yoga. Can you go to the bed? Okay. Yeah, yoga is already been. It's okay. What the hell language is that? That's not English. So you, in order to bend your elbows with the inverted palms, you might need to lift your hips. Yeah. Well, anyway. Oh, yeah. Okay. Then we inhale, hands forwards. Am I yelling? Sorry. Exhale, hands back. Maybe you want to go step back, flex your toes. Inhale, hands forward. Exhale, hands back, bend the elbows. What? Flex the spine. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Chin to the chest. Why not? Oh, is that like a experimental music chair? Then we come on the backs of the hands. Oh, yeah. Beauty. Go from the muscle to the joint, yin to yang. Spread the fingers, open the wrist, flex the toes, right? and push slightly back, so nice. Pull the wrist apart while hugging the elbows in. Expansive joints, internal wrists, external shoulders. Um, we'll talk about that never, but it is internal wrist, even though they look turned out because the weight's on the thumb, okay? Then we roll the wrist out and grip the earth with the thumb wherever, in the middle, usually pointing in. But okay, grip the earth, roll the wrist out. Beautiful, spread the finger, grip the earth. All right, hug the elbows in. Base of thumb is inner wrist. Elbows bent and hugging in is external shoulder. This is the first counter spiral anatomy structure. We know it well, we're doing good. Cat, slow me down if I'm talking too fast or Tone me down if I'm talking too loud. Shoulder plates down into the ribs. Flex the spine, get long inner arm, long outer joints. You can feel it. Yeah, get the inner arm hug. Get that outer, get the joints nice and long. Then put the palms down, index forward and stand down. Juicy. Let's walk it out and get it good in the back chain of the legs, through the seat and beyond, through the spine, shoulders, all down to the elbows and the wrists, thumbs and fingers. So nice. Let's hold one side and lift one leg. Any side will do. It's a short sequence. It's just one pose. It doesn't matter. But we kick the knee behind the wrist in a swan or a pigeon. And we flex to keep the back toes flexed and kick the heel back. That's it. Just a little prep. Get that, check that sacrum, check the neck. Long thigh, long, awaken the core. Then we kick back, inhale, right? Go deep, head, forehead towards the floor, get into the chest, and then drop down a little power. Nice. Inhale, press up, right? Exhale, press. Back, nicely done. We'll walk it out. Oh, feels so good. We'll hold the other heel down. I'm so grateful to be practicing with you. I really need it. I did the yoga festival online this morning. That was nice. That was also good practice. Then we inhale, open up. The second leg, Scorpio. Beautiful, that's it. <clears throat> then we kneel behind the wrist and press the flex toe heel back. That's the whole thing. So good. And then we feel good enough to move on from your long, delicious stress. Then you're gonna stance and kick straight back. And now long, press the chest towards the floor, deepen the shoulder, 
and drop down. Beautiful. Now strengthen the chest, the arms, the long core. Compress the lower spine and release the lower spine and increase the lower core. Beauty. That's what the dogs do. And then kneel down, rest. So nice. Let's come onto the backs of the hands one more time. Spread the fingers out so the thumbs kind of go forwards. Yes. Open the wrist, push back. My toes are flexed. Do as you please. So nice. Now, keeping the index finger straight, close the remaining thumb and fingers together on the backs of your hands. To, if you want to increase the stretch in your forearm tendon without straining the nerve in your inner wrist. Keep the index straight, good job, okay. Then open up, roll it out, finger stance grip again, roll it out. Finger stance grip again. The grip is the hug, right? That activate the inner arm to rib. Shoulder blades drop one more time, inner wrist, outer shoulder, it's automatic but then flex the spine and extend, spread the shoulder blades around the ribs and extend the shoulder joints, increase the power, little tiger body, a little flexed spine, right? <clears throat> okay, start to warm up. All right. Yeah, a little tiger body, good. Okay. And palms down, stand down. All right. Okay, then plank forward a little bit. <clears throat> plank dog. And kneel down, please, flex your toe, hug in, spread the fingers out, drop the shoulder, flex in and up, shift forward, adjust your length so you can drop your pelvis, keep your shoulder over your wrist, inner wrist, outer shoulder. And we pull up, get that long shoulder joint, we press up, maybe squeeze the thigh, relax the ankle, maybe squeeze the ankles in towards each other, so the heels point up, but then relax your bottom by swagging your pelvis side to side. Inner line of leg, that's inner ankle, outer hip. Another spiral, but flex back and down. Beautiful job. Inhale, Scorpio leg. Exhale, lunge behind the wherever. Back inner heel down, core in. Right away, nice. We didn't do prana bonda prep. But hey, let's core in a little bit. Oof. I just need to get my body going here. I hope you're okay. We're gonna take it back. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, prayer down. A little bit of a push there and a little bit of shoulder blades back. Free the neck, activate the core. Beauty, center line power. Boom, lungey, lunge, lunge. All right, let's peel up, lace up, lace lunge. D, 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 kneel down, okay. And then we'll go into the prayer, twist in the lunge, right? And we're doing good. Keep pressing the chest up, okay? Inner ankle, outer hip, the front leg, right? Press the heel back, draw the bow, Oof. so nice. Reach for the floor. It's okay to kneel down. It's okay to go inside the leg. Whatever you need, press the sacrum, take a breath and twist. Circle up and stand up option. Whoa, nice. Okay. If you want to turn it in, this is a little bit different. This is internal shoulder. That's for the arm locks, right? And you can clasp. A little early for that, but just as an option. We drop to the inside of the foot, rest, pull back, breathe the kidney, lunge forward, next inhale, kick back, right, for plank, Ekapada Danda, one-legged plank, Chudandasana, Chaturanga, four limbs, Urdhva Mukha, upward facing, right, Svana, dog, Adho Mukha, downward facing, Svana Dog. Okay, good. Inhale, second leg, Scorpio. Everybody okay? Let's step that second foot forward, back inner heel, down, core in. Just check in with ourselves. Stretch the back, 
Ribs, strengthen the front ribs. Beautiful. Inhale, warrior one. Ah. Oh, exhale, prayer pulse. Little push, let's get those shoulder blades back and free the neck and activate the front body. Beautiful. We'll lace down and lunge, lace lunge. Ah. Okay, prayer twist. This sequence only I taught this morning. Uh, it takes people time to learn. I just repeated it. But we'll do a lot more today. Because we're advanced. <laughs> and yes. And then deliver. Sure. Press, ground, work as you like. The movement creates the release. And the hold creates the depth. Beautiful. And you know, it's a little early, so don't care. I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna go for it. A little finger clasp, nothing special. A little internal joint massage and release to recirculate. And when you're ready, drop back to lunge. And just breathe your body, take a little break. Mm. Check it. Use the breath as your barometer. Feel the gauge of the prana, inner ankle, inner heel, outer hip, sit bones together. That's the inner ankle, outer hip. Let it come from inside. Squeeze your sit bones together and let the hip follow out and the inner, inner line activate. Beauty. Inhale, kick back. Exhale, press down. Inhale, press up. Exhale, press back. Downward dog, one. Two. Three, allow the sacrum to release the day. Four. Five, kneel down, please elbows down, automatic counter spiral, elbows down and shoulders out, and allows more inner palm, less resistance from the shoulder. That's always nice, and then just stand down, do shoulder work. Going back, do chest work, going forward. Go back with this inner shoulder blade. Press forward, work the chest and the arms. Inner arm, inhale, outer arm, exhale, inner wrist, inhale, back, outer shoulder, beautiful. Straight arms, lunge, grounded lunge, take down and draw your bow. Just feel good today. I'm going to start working up to some more information. Gonna press the sacrum, internalize that shoulder massage again. Little sexy dance. I know I'm far away, sorry. Let me know if you want me to get closer. I just want you to see me when I stand up. Beautiful. All right. Okay, some people catch the foot, go for that wake up call. Whoa. Yeah. Get your money's worth, get your life savings worth, your whole investment that brought us to this moment, this body invested. Right, fortified and release. Back to the lungs, take a break. Inner ankle, lose base of large toe, inner arch, inner heel pressing. Right. Outer hip is from the inner seat, squeezing together, the bandha. Yeah, very easy, so nice. Get that long line of power in the spine. Next, exhale, lunge forward. Next, inhale, kick back for play. Beautiful. Right, exhale, press, one. Inhale, back, long back. Exhale, strong front. Inhale, long back. Uh -huh. Exhale, strong front. Four out of five, doing so good. All right, and take it down. Ooh. Inhale, press up. 
those knees up, get those ankles down. Beautiful. And take it back. All right. Take your second side lunge. All right. On the ground. Beauty. Draw your bow nice and slow. Oh, oh good. All right. Perhaps press the sacrum. Fingers down. Shoulder in. That's inner wrist right away. Out and but this is inner shoulder. So with complete internalization for the specific massage of the joint. And then we want to rotate the shoulder out. That's why we catch the thumbs up outer foot that we're gripping from the inner wrist. Smart. And pull it in. Whoa. Yes. Well, I got a little cramp. You hold it longer. I have to stretch out a little bit. You do what you need to do. Good for you. The next inhale, hands down inside the foot. And we know the drill. Inhale, kick back. Inhale, give me five. Long backs, strong fronts. Inhale, open the back. Exhale, close the front. Three. Two, one, very nice, inhale, press up, work it out. I'm going to check my wrists here, come on the backs of the hands, spread the fingers, push your seat back. I like to flex my toes here, you do as you like. That would be a little bit more compressed on my hip. So I'm gonna put the brakes on and activate the legs by flexing the toe. Keep the pelvis up, keep the inner line active. I'm hugging in all the time. Weight on the inner knee bone all the time. Good, base of large toe to sit bone, right? Okay, then I'm gonna take a butterfly. So I'm gonna thumbs forward from spread fingers. Beautiful. Push it back, get that super wide shoulder, lots of inner wrists on the press, right? Lots of outer shoulder on the back. If you want to intensify, if you want to intensify this spiral, you would take a very narrow stance just for fun. Get more chest, a little more hug, get a little more peck, a little more challenge. Then we're gonna bend the elbows slightly with that narrow stance. Although there is a space between the elbows as we've discussed in the past so that when the weight shifts in naturally, the bones don't press each other. You have a little space there, right? Keep the hug, keep the drop, everything we do, right? Flex it, don't compress the neck, let it you know, drop the head and then stand it down, big outer shoulder, big inner wrist and drop the head if you can and hold. Don't look up, just stay and enjoy. Lots of outer shoulder, lots of inner wrist. Outer arm, very solid. Inner arm, very active. Big hug on the drop for the push up. Right? Big hug on the narrow stance drop, very tough. Right, that's like a Mayurasana. So elbows together towards the navel, big spiral action. You can't press your belly, don't. You can do. Okay, then I'm gonna take the hands, fingers to the edge of the mat, thumbs forward. Your neck is feels hyperextended or compressed. Just pull your chin to your chest and take a breath. sit back or whatever. But then when you're ready, thumb tips come to the middle, right? Thumbs tips come to the middle, right? And we grip in and hug in, boom. We know this counter spiral very well already. So let's try something a little new so you can stay freshly informed, flex up. Just hold here. This is just practice, wide blades. Spacious spine, upper thoracic rib spine, very open ribs pulling off the spine. Beautiful. 
Okay, palms down, rest. All right, now come into a squat or a stance, please. All right, getting a little warm, good for you, sweetie. And then we come up to a stance. I ate, I had dinner, so I'm a little thick around the mid-drift, sorry about that. Um, so then we take the striking fist and we put it, lift the toes and put the striking fist right between the base of the large toes, both feet, okay? That's your ankles about hip distance apart. Okay, so we're using our body as a reference of our design, so we fit ourselves, okay? So that's nice. If you're feeling a little tight in the hips or the back, just use two fists between the base of the large toes, touching the base of the large toe. And that's more like shoulder, your shoulder distance apart, okay? So you understand your, your body design. All right. So now you've got your shoulder distance apart with a double fist mudra measurement, okay? Whatever you want, one fist hip distance, two fist shoulder distance. Now from here, we're gonna bend the knees and take a little rest. Just huddle, forearm on the thigh perhaps, right? A little bit of activation, stretch that back spine, strengthen that front spine, lumbar. Get a little more hot, a little more open, a little more feeling, less pain, more power. Okay, beautiful. Now from now, I want you to take your peace sign mudra, so thumbs go over the ring finger, right? The two index and middle finger come together and you turn your palm up and make a little hook, right? That's very powerful. That's be a very powerful assist like on a hip with doing teacher's training uh, or for the self. But for now it's self-assist. So we go to the inner arch of the foot and resist. We push down inner angle, base of large toe while we pull up with that strong mudra. Beautiful. That's the close-up camera angle. And then we're hooking and pulling and pressing down through the feet, find the squat, and just resisting and creating a lot of inner activation, inner ankle. Lifting the toes automatically activates the primary medial arch, and which will create structure or also integrity in the ankle and ankle alignment. The toes up is the deal. Activate the inner arch, base of inner line, the A-frame, to the core and X beyond the upper core. So for now, that's nice. So we did that, we created resistance, we're activating our inner feet, we're going good. The next thing to do is to push your hands with spread fingers to the upper outer shin, however you wanna do it, whatever gives you power. And you push into the upper shin that's below the knee or on the lower leg bone, okay? And you're pushing that in and as you push in, you resist and pull your legs apart and feel your sit bones spread and your front hip joints deepen. Got it? Right? A little bit? Yeah, yeah, okay. That's a big counter spiral. But then we go up to the inner thigh above the knee. Now we're on the upper inner leg bone. Inner thighs, fingers spread, backs of the hand, boom. Inner thigh. And we squeeze, we just pull the apart and we squeeze in. Subtle advance is just thumbs, the more inner sit bone. But whatever, squeeze in, try to activate the inner leg, or if your thumbs help you better to get more sit bone, woo, get some of that. Okay, now from there, you keep going and let the sit bones come together with the tailbone, which would flex the lumbar spine, right? And then you'd be pelvis almost in a neutral position over the ankle, okay? Then from there, you hold the, I'm gonna test you on this. So <laughs> try to take it in. You probably already know this stuff. I'm a little fatty today, that's okay, because you know me. We're in this neutral pelvis, and the next inhale is gonna fill your lungs and let your chest lift. You could also put your thumbs again this way on your upper side rib. Right, right, and close, close that in, yeah. And then inhale, expand the side back body to get the continued lifted sit bone. 
and come down to a neutral position from all of that. Um, yeah. yeah, I need a better lighting, but here I am. A little bit of a halo there. All right, so that's good. All right, so let's, let's uh, review that a little faster and see if you can download it in your body, embody the, the experience. So we'll go whatever distance we want between the base of the large toes, right? Then we'll activate our hook mudra, peace sign, pull, all right? Get the inner arch, lift the toes, ankle structure alignment, activate inner stance, inner heel, base of large toe, very strong, very good, right? Inner ankle. Then we press the outer shin, always spread the finger for power. Push in, resist out, get the knees right. Get the sit bones open, get the hips active, right? Deep. Then we go for the inner thigh, spread the fingers back of hand this time. Squeeze in, right? Go a little higher if you need more feeling to get it in there. If that doesn't feel as much, just hold your thigh and keep going through the flexed motion till you get to hyperflexion of the spine and the pelvis will be in a neutral place. Should be good to the ankle, knee and hip from the inner line to the inner seat, moving into the abdominal core up to the ribs structure, right? So we hold the pelvis. From here, we hold the ribs. Exhale, reset. And on the next inhale, allow the back body to expand. It should bring your shoulders back and your chest up without hyperextending. My big ribs are there, but it's, it's quite good with the alignment. Okay, then we continue the elbows together, right? And we lift the arms up with the elbows together, which will force the shoulder blades down. They will scoop in and up against the ribs and support lifting of the chest bone, okay? And eventually the elbows will separate, of course, when you straighten your arms, but we try to keep the elbows together as we reach up for a, a while for a little while, as much as you can, elbows together. So let it be an exercise to bring deep awareness in your side body. Then you straighten up, interlace the fingers, perhaps extending the index and the thumb and a variation of Kali Mudra, my intention Mudra, extension, extending my, the intention of direction of energy. And Namaste, come back to powerhouse or body, hand body structure by closing the middle and ring finger like that uh, and keeping the Trinity base strong. And that's when, like we did in warrior pul prayer pulse, then that's when the shoulder blades would go back. When the wrist gets strong between the elbows, that's when the shoulder blades would go back and you'd kind of turn, it's not easy, but you get close to the chest and you can free the neck to go back to neutral. So when you make the yogi nod, which can mean anything. Uh, it's actually a, also a sign of the skull is balanced on the spine, it's not pressed forward. So pulling back allows you to drop in, which also activates the pectoral girdle, what I call the upper core, right? Chest rib body, beautiful. It's very centered and it also looks very nice. If you like to share yoga through imagery, it's better to show your open heart, show your power and your alignment. Your, Comfort, sthira sukham asanam, in other words, steady, comfortable position. Okay, so nice. All right, it's just a 90 minute flow. We're not flowing very much, are we? Is that enough technology? You wanna flow a little bit? Let me just show you one more thing that we've done before, but you might not have done with me, which is once you do set up wherever you want your feet to be, whatever, however, whatever width you want. Try to, okay, look, okay, let me show you. Go to the back of, stand at the back of your mat, please. Stand at the back of your mat if you want to try this technique, right? Take your one or two fists, whatever kind of stance you want for downward dog, or any dog. Then keep your feet wherever you put, kept them, establish them and then bring your, come down and bring your hands forward. Your feet stayed where you put them. 
Hands towards the front of the mat. Right, so here's the back view. Excuse me, but once I establish where I want my feet to be, I'll just walk into my dog and let my let my feet do the walking. Get my hand, get my heels close to the floor, and then feel very long. Right now, when I reach back with one hand, can you see me? No. When I reach back with one hand, I let's say for example, okay, sorry, let's um, do that again. This test, this ana spiral anatomy test is better if you do one fist because you're only gonna be able to use one fist uh, from downward dogs, I beg your pardon. So in this instance, let's go back to the back of the mat, sorry. And I'm gonna make sure you can see my feet. And then I'm gonna put one fist between the base of my large toes. So I have my ankles hit distance apart. Going a little faster now. <clears throat> Once we set that up, we'll walk it out into the dog, keeping the feet there. Heels up, heels down. Hopefully the heels barely touch the ground, but that's a quite challenging. So when you reach back, one way to find basic alignment is that your fist can fit between the base of your large toes in downward dog, here's the, here's the profile. My fist fits between the base of my large toes in downward dog, and that usually puts me about where I wanna be in a safe zone where I can not slip. Okay, so that's an inner spiral of the ankle, outer spiral of the hip. So can you right now rotate your ankles inwards, maximum? You feel that in your upper front shin, right? You feel the compression on your hips, right? In your joints, the front of your hip, the head of your thigh bone. Then you rotate your hips out, trying to keep the ankles in. And you'll feel this incredible stretch of your outer front shin and continuing up the outer band of the outer thigh up and whatever else you feel. And you may start to warm up and go into a longer pose by adjusting your feet. Inner ankle, outer hips a little bit. Try to keep the inner ankle again, outer hips. One more time, inner ankle, outer hips. This is perfect knee alignment. Very hard to bend your knees when your ankles are in and your hips are out, you feel the shins kick in really strong. Whoa, you try to bend both knees, the heels down. Then you lift your heels up and squeeze your knees together. More inner ankle, base of large toe, and more inner sit bone activation of Vonda. Uh, now the knees are together and we're pulsing, pulsing, hugging in all the time, little fire dog, little hug in. In outer shoulder, inner wrist, a little strength forward, a little tiger. Drop the pelvis and continue the motion. All right. Inner ankle here, heels point up. Don't collapse out. That would jam your, that would jam your sacrum, but it won't because you won't do it. So just where you need to be, so rotate your inner ankles in and then relax your the side to side, release your back and bottom. Try to find inner line. We use props like a block to find that feeling. And that's okay. And then flex back, wrist limit, right? Roll over the toe. Heels up. High heel, how high? High as the sky. Ankle extension max. You're barely on the base of the toes. Very high seat. Very high sit bone. Pull your sit bones up, please. Let your navel deepen as you get into the shoulders. Then finally put your heels down as you squeeze your front thigh. Feel the outer calf really switch on. And press out. All right, let's do a little flow. Inhale, Scorpio. Good job, everybody. Exhale, lunge. Good job means you're still doing it. You're still in the game. Still on the mat. Pour in. 
Do what you do. Alright. Give you a little. So the counter spiral also sets up structural stability. For example, as you know, I assume everybody knows already, but we the activation of bond of what's immobilize the pelvis and the sacrum. So when you twist in this type of practice, it's not a dynamic type of movement of the pelvis. It's just stable pelvis, sthira sukham asana, steady, happy, comfortable connection pose. So the inner ankle, the inner feet, the inner thigh, the inner seat, stabilize the sacrum so you can whip that, work that spine to protect the nerves. Okay. Elvis forward. Okay, good. Good job. All right, bear down. Balance up. Okay, let me get my proprioceptive attention. Okay, I'm on. Inhale, boxers, prayer. All right. Exhale, hold. This boxer's ballet is in my 2000 New York City first teacher's training manual that I drew, cut and pasted pictures. Inhale. I just found it recently. I'll post it soon once I digitize it. Exhale. Inhale. Yules. Exhale. That burns, doesn't it? One more. Inhale. Yours. Exhale. Okay, then we flip it, we kick. So inhale, exhale, back leg comes up with the chest. Arms come down, back again. Exhale, strike. Three, four, five, halfway, four. Three, two, one. Yeah, I'm going to lose the sponge. I get a little dance ability. Then we hold. Sorry. Then we hold, right? Catch and pull. Cross, cross, kick. Again, inner ankle. Press to the inner foot. Right, activate the sit bone from the inner heel. Then twist it out and let your thumb potentially externalize your hip. But you're kicking the inner heel base of large toe. Spiral that counter spiral structure, that leg anatomy. And take your, sorry, take your bow. I was just watching this wonderful teacher online. She was falling out of the poses and I was like, that's terrible, that's me. And she was so good, it doesn't matter. Hands down, swing flow. Three. Four, five, take it down, inhale up, exhale back. She was also out of breath. I was like, what's wrong with her? I'm like, that's me. <laughs> Don't eat dinner <sighs> before practice. And then we do the other side, right? Okay, nice. Open up, take the warrior. Okay. Oh, reach up. So good prayer down. Little boxers ballet. Exhale. Inhale, pull back and up with the arm, lift the leg, lead with your chest. Exhale, stand down. Four, extension. Inhale, extend. Exhale, flex. 
Inhale, extend. Exhale, core in. In. Extend, X. Ah, flex. And then we shift into the kick. In, prep, X strike. Okay. Okay, good. One. Two. Three. Four. Halfway. Four. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. And when you're ready, you're gonna pull it up. Find your inner standing heel. Cross, cross, kick. Press to the inner foot all the time. Right, and let your outer hip get activated. Not just from the thumb, but from the inner thigh, squeezing sit bones together. Let the navel come back from the Banda, Uddiyana Mula. Uh, mula to Uddiyana, pelvic floor to abdominal core. The whole another skill, learning balance by observing your image. Incredible proprioception, fun. Then when you take your hands down, you can hopefully be close to the front of the mat with your hands. And swing slow a little back. Of course, you know the key is to do your spiral structure before the swing to make the balance in the flow, which of course is spread the fingers out to base the inner wrist, index forward, hug the elbows in to externalize the shoulder, shoulder blades down into the ribs to fortify the structure to set up the extension of the shoulder joint, wrapping up the blade. Long shoulder joints, kind of the key. Strong tiger front ribs is kind of the deal. Then you're ready, or you need to step back a little if you can't get your heel up for the swing. But then that's the deal. You're already in the pose from the shoulders down, from the ribs down. Yeah. You just get over your mind fear. Yeah. If you have a hard time coming up like me today, you can. Gamble and bend the lower knee. It will make you more up, more light. <laughs> a little more courage. <laughs> right? But the real balance point when I'm resisting, personally, the shoulders have to come farther forward. You have to really commit. And the balance is already there. <sighs> Once you're forward, it's a little easier and then press down whenever. Because I turned out slightly, I didn't hurt my wrist. Make sure you get that inner palm base. It will save you a lot of, a world of unnecessary destabilization, frankly, pain. Then grip the earth and tiger in, and this will regenerate your nerves and actually release the pain faster. By gripping, even though it feels strenuous, will relieve your nerves faster in your wrist. <sighs> and then put your palms down and stand down. And take a few breaths. Two. Three. Try to lift your toes in every standing pose. Find the base of the structure, the mudra in the asana, the root of the tree. Beautiful. Come on down. Oh, we're doing good. We have time. Doing really good. That was about halfway. A little more. How are you? You good? Should we keep going? Yeah, I feel good. Oh, I'm starting to digest a little bit. Okay, all right, spiral. Okay, well, cross your ankle, 
Jump through and pulse on the down, knees behind the wrist, thumbs forward, please, as you like, index or thumb or in between, but base your palm. Right, right, do a butterfly, hand stance, structure index, and pull up and pulse down. Let's feel strong today, it is a little strong. Just kneel down and shift your weight forward. It's all strengthening, it's all toning, as you like. Cross the ankle, not the toe. <laughs> I highly recommend thumbs forward here. And micro pulse. Little technology information, little yogic information, yogic arts. Yogic means technique of yoga or the, the practice in the path. Okay. So, little technique, little gijutsu in Japanese, where we get the word jujitsu. It's actually gijutsu. Technique, that's what it means. Uh, jitsu technique, right? So the technique here is what? Breath motion, vinyasa aspect, the flow theory. Real quick, if it's a lot, this is in the, this is on the test in your teacher's training review. A large slow motion movement requires what? What kind of breath? I don't want the name, I want the, the description. It's, that's how simple life is. A, a, large, a large, slow movement requires a large, slow breath. That's Ujjayi. So if we're moving big and we're moving slow, tell not, breathe deep. Also the spiral anatomy of breath. Because everything moves in spirals energetically, right? anatomically and the small fast motion requires what kind of breath self-explanatory exam you can't fail you get the certificate <laughs> um, for your office wall your studio wall uh, a, a, of course a small fast motion requires a small fast breath so <laughs> would be a fit, right? So you optimize your energy without over detoxing. So the breath controls the movement. They have to match. The breath movement and the body movement have to match. We know that is vinyasa, but it also applies to the speed and size of the movement, right? Mass and velocity. So then we uh, pull through and sit down for more count, more spiral. Uh, review. So we, here's the, the the most important spiral structure between the arm and the leg, in my view, which is the arm lock, arm leg lock, hasta bada tada, right? Catch and kick. Where's the, what part of the foot is pushing? Inner, inner ankle. Outer hip comes from inner seat, right? So that's all, that's easy. Not that easy, but you know, sit bones together. Yeah, you might need to walk your pelvis leg side to side to get your sit bones together. That's natural. Just so it's comfortable on your skin, inner skin, good for you. Okay, now if this was a lunge, if this was a, a real hastabhata pada, right? You can put your leg up, you can cross and kick. That's again, inner ankle, outer hip, inner wrist, outer shoulder. This is happening all the time, right? Okay, good. Then we would press up, right? And press back. Go to a arm lock lunge, right? Then you drop, kneel down and drop your elbows to the ground to get the shoulder behind the calf. You can pull your hips back and stretch a little bit. Rest. Then when you come lunging forward, you arm lock the rib to the thigh. This is internal shoulder, so it's a little different. This is more external hip, internal ankle. Then you stand down. 
Then you open up. Let the sacrum go forward between the heels. Good. Extend or not. Clasp the fingers. Locking arm is palm out forever. Doesn't turn in. And then you clasp or you go for the wrist and you pull. The arm getting pulled is definitely inner wrist from the thumb and outer shoulder as you pull the chest back as much as possible. But don't care. Right? Inner angle, outer hip. Okay, good. You can do whatever pose you want to do. As you like, I'll just rest. Flashing lights. And then you come down, drop in. Okay. And Scorpio out. Let's open that hip and knee step back, stretch the core. Yeah. Such a nice counter release posture. The signature of vinyasa in a way because it was not allowed in Ashtanga. We needed some more of a sustainable practice for those of us who were challenged by it physically or otherwise. Then we spread the fingers and come through, big motion, big breath. Right? Small motion, small breaths, protect the inner palm ability. You get satisfied, you get a little pumped, but in a long, expansive way, you come through, help yourself through. Once you get through, go for an arm lock, arm leg lock, hasta, bada, pada, and catch and kick. Inner ankle, outer hip. Neutral knee, knee follows the toe, second large toe, the center, beautiful. Do what you need to do. As you like. Right, what's gotten into me today? Oh, I'm not built for that anymore. Then you, you know, you try to press up. Right. Come back to a lunging side stance. All right. Then kneel down. Get your arm locked together. And pull your hips back and elbows down. Take a little break, maybe. Check in yourself. When you're ready, go back to your stance. Let the hips go between the heels. Right. The hip does internalize on the back leg a little bit when the, when the pelvis is forward. That's a different thing to stabilize the leg and the pelvis. But that's a different, slightly different game. So for now, let's stick with the program. Close the rib to the thigh, getting the shoulder behind the calf, and then back of hand to hip, extend or not, extend and bend, palm out, upper palm in if you're clasping, both palms out if you're going for the upper wrist to pull the shoulder open on the inner thumb wrist, inner wrist, beautiful. Then whatever you want to do, can do, right? Shh. 
And again, you've got to pull your shoulder back to get your chest up, to get your tail forward. When you start to come up, you kick up, but you also pull your chest up from getting the shoulder back, which will pull the sacrum forward, inner stance. Right? Then you take it down. Drop in. Pull back and rest. And Scorpio out if you, if you want to balance out. And drop to neutral. Okay, nice. Okay. Come jump through. Big small movements. Another counter spiral point is kind of fun and it allows us to do another pose. When I was, I know I always talk about back in the day, but when I was the first generation of teachers to create vinyasa from Ashtanga and Iyengar, whatever, Shivananda, whatever, Bikram, anything, Pilates. And, um, but back in the Ashtanga days, the, the original Western masters the first generation of Western masters who were my teachers, I went around to a lot of the top masters and asked questions. Got me in a lot of trouble. Sometimes they don't want to, don't think there needs to be, the inquiry is self-fulfilled. You're supposed to ask yourself through experience. I, they're right. But anyway, there was no answer at that time for which wrist do you hold and there still might not be an answer, but I don't know if we've evolved, but this is counter spiral immediately. So if you, if you can, can, you might not be able to do this, but at least you can learn. Um, if you can't, if you bind from the outside, um, that supports the outside to extend forward. That's outer ankle. It destabilizes the inner stance, the inner arch, the ankle alignment, the inner line of activation of inner muscle to center power, the core, Vanda. So if you catch from the inside, I beg your pardon, if you catch from the inside, but you're catching the outside, that will collapse you out. And you would then if you try to push your inner foot forward, because you know what's good for you innately, intrinsically and naturally, intuitively, organically, it, it, it kind of hits the wall of the, out of the uh, inner wrist. It doesn't really support that action. So if you don't have a, a teacher that has processed what is the technology, the flow theory or the technology of mechanics, you, it might be never occur to you. So I, let me just in case you don't know this, I'll just show you what I came up with. So if you catch from the outside, so you're catching the inside, okay? So the outside of the foot is the hand that's grabbing. Outside grabs, okay? So you grab from the outside, you grab the inner wrist, inner side, inside side wrist. Is that right? Is that right? Am I doing it right? Yeah, okay, good. So then from the outside, then the outer um, trans, uh, medial transverse, uh, med medial lateral transverse, medial transverse lateral, the lateral arcs, the outer edge of the blade of the foot will be based against that inner wrist. Then the when you grab from the outside, it leaves this huge space for your inner arcs to kick in. And it supports, for, by basing the outer edge of the foot, it supports the inner foot to want to press in and creates a space for it to press in. 
and then it's also comfortable on your wrist bone nerves. If you go right above the heel in the inner arch where it fits like a puzzle, not up at the top, right? Right above the heel in the arch, high arch. And then you're good to go. You've got massive load from the inner line, the inner edge of the foot. And that will give you so much inner juice to the, up to the sit bone. And there's your inner ankle, outer hip, inner seat, deep core, long spine, dropped shoulders. The elbows can hug in. So there's the outer shoulder. Both inner wrists are cooking. That's a fact. They're both working totally. And it's all counter spiraling good. The inner ankle can press into the inner heel and the outer hips will both happen from the inner sit bones. So you've got counter spiral going on in all four limbs, which will activate the ribs and free up the spine. I hope that's interesting. Through practice, it will start to feel interesting, hopefully. So then we release and do whatever and go for the other side. You need a little vinyasa, take it. <laughs> or, you know, it's always there for you, whatever. <sighs> All right, that was weak, but okay. So then we do the other side. And most of us know, but before I forget, let me remind us that this is Janu Shashasana. Janu is knee, Shashasana's head. So the head is directing towards over the knee. But it's actually not a flex pose, it's an extended pose it's to my the way I was taught. I wouldn't really want to flex here too much because I feel compressed, so I would extend in the line of the knee, Janu Shirsha on the same line. I don't I wouldn't, it's obviously often translated as head to knee, but I wouldn't teach that. So then to X to speed up a little bit, the out um did I teach that wrong? Outside grabs, inside wrist. Well, whatever I taught, this is right uh, for me. So the outside hand grabs, I might have taught that wrong in the beginning. Um, the outside hand grabs, the base is the outer blade of the foot. The inner arch, foot, base of large toe presses in, activates the inner arch as the toes pull back and the ankle slightly extends. Then you grab the inner wrist which allows space for you to press the inner foot in. Yeah, whatever I taught before, grabbing from the inside, in my experience, would inhibit the inner foot from pressing forward, physically and supportively. So when I grab from the outside, just to be completely clear, and grab the inner wrist, the outer foot blade edge of the foot is supported, the inner edge of the blade of the foot is, has space to extend forward. Then you leap into the bent leg to allow the sit bone to draw back optimally in the straight leg sit bone. Then reground the sit bone and keep working the inner ankle forward, the outer hip back, let it happen organically. Keep lifting the chest up and forward, extending the spine from the hips. Elbows hug into the floor, shoulders rotate out, which allows the blades to draw, supports the lifting of the chest and lengthening of the spine. Beauty. And I just remind us real quick, I didn't do on the first side, that Jamashusha is an ABC in classical Ashtanga. I don't know about Aegar, probably the same, because of this from the same school. But the A is the is inner thigh activation from inner foot, perhaps. But also B is sitting on the heel. So that's Mulabanda prop right there. So the he sit the heel between the sit bones in classical practice. And if the nerves hurt a little bit, you just back off. Nerves will move with the muscle. They're very, very smart, micro muscles. You just do it a couple of times and you'll find it gets more comfortable as the body adapts to your presence. And then you, the foot ankle stays flexed, however. Don't point the foot under there and destabilize the knee. It's, it's A foot, ABC. 
So A foot is flex 90 degree ankle. Then B, the ankle doesn't change at 90 degrees when you sit up, if possible. It'll change a little bit, maybe 45 degrees, but okay. So then you sit on the heel, and that's Mula Bandha, root lock, right? Root base, bond to bond, right? And then that's that. Is that interesting? Everybody knows this stuff by now, right? You know this stuff. But then C, the way I used to teach it, <clears throat> I taught my Mysore programs around the world, uh, mostly New York and the Shanghai, to be fair. Uh, but then we roll to the outer straight leg side, we reach in like an arm lock and catch palm up heel. So that when we pull that back, letting the hip rotate out, we put the inner arch of the foot on the inner thigh of the leg like that. This is Uddiyana Bandha Mudra assist, self-assist. Then we reach from over the top and pull the toes back. Because this can be really hard on the knee. A lot of, I've seen people suffer from jumping into this pose too quick or being pushed into it, actually. Uh, so then we pull the toes back and try to get to the base of the toes on the floor, okay? Nobody's pushing the leg. Just nobody wants to put strain the knee, outer knee ligament and ACL. So then, uh, then we a little bit push the earth and slide the front heel straight leg forward a little bit. Can't see it, but you can see me move forward a little bit. The, the knee is going to feel it. Maybe the uh, medial meniscus, the inner knee also be careful everywhere. Then you're very close to this game. You're very close to the advanced. Janashishasana C, head and knee pose. Now this is Uddiyana Bandha assist from the heel. Again, it's moving up deep of the navel and that's yoga mudra in a way, right? Or activating core. And then you reach from the outside, catch the inner root. You might not be doing any of this right now, but if you had a block under your thigh, you could protect your knee. Uh, it's hard to bend the knee in this pose, but we could use a straps over there, but you could use a prop. It's all good. And even with the towel for your students, perhaps, they could get below the base of the toe into the arch, and they could get a nice resistance from your inner pool to press the inner foot forward with the, with the prop. That's also quite nice, right? Just, you know, so that's another way. And you're moving into your abdominal Udiana core. Okay. So that is teacher's training or workshop, which is a short training. And then you go, oh, why are we doing that? And you stretch out the leg. And then you might do Eka Ana Vira, one Eka, one Ana Leg Vira Hero. One legged hero, Ekapada Vira. Asana, base pose. Adjust your sit pose. And this is just to internalize the knee for a moment. Counter pose and feel relief and juice. Yeah. It's nice. From all the extern extreme hyper external rotation of the knee, we a little internal rotation of the knee. Give it a little rub. Make sure it's good. Make sure the leg, the thigh is long. The longer the thigh, the more comfortable the knee. I mean, right? So yeah, so we turn the hands backwards and we kind of spiral the shoulder out with the base of the thumb is always in our wrist. Good, right? That's why we turn the hands back to bring the shoulder blade, joints out the shoulder blades together and the inner wrist base. Then you, you know, Get that long thigh. Take the pressure off the knee. Activate the core. Stabilize the back.
And we'll go back to the first side, if you don't mind. And we'll do Jhana Shursasana B, C, if you like, or A. I'm just going to go from A to B right away. So from foot to inner thigh. The inner thigh activate to the foot. The foot activate to the inner thigh. So you activate the inner line on A, right? And you get that nice inner awareness in the foot, inner, from the inner leg. Then once the inner leg is active, you get a little bonda, get a little structure, and you shift onto the heel between the sit bones and they find a safe spot. It's comfortable. Reach from the outside, catch the inner wrist or use a towel. Press the inner foot forward towards the index finger of the catching hand or the base of thumb, the inner wrist. Then we roll, we reach underneath from the opposite side, palm up, pull the, catch the ankle or the heel, pull that foot up onto the thigh We'll change, roll to the outer thigh, release your hand, support, reach with the other hand, pull the toes back, same side hand, pulls the toes back. You're trying to get the base of the toes towards the floor. The knees taken, feeling it, you might want to chill here or back off or sit on a block. No, sitting on a block won't work. Sorry, that's a mistake. The foot have to be the same level to fit to the body. So we couldn't, we could sit on a little blanket maybe, but mostly, again, the main support would be under the thigh, as up the outer thigh as high as possible, not towards the knee. Mass, get more large bones, so large, closer to the larger joint supports the next smaller joint. And they get successively smaller from hip to small toe, right? All the way down, boom, boom, boom. And there we are. Mm. Heel towards navel, so nice. All right. And slowly release. And counter pose, counter ro internally rotate the knee. Hopefully that feels pretty good. Little core. Set up that leg for the kick because it's going to do the, it's going to, you know, it's going to, from the knee, it's going to bend. Once you've got the toe to the crown, then the, just the knee bends so that you shift the knee forward over the ankle. You've got that nice structure, and then that's strong activation of inner leg from the, uh, the, the boat variation will activate more kick from the heel. All right. Let it happen. Let the breath take you there. the pulse of the pelvis. Whew. I felt that boy. And then slow down. Okay, we have about 10 minutes. Let's do a super slow core. Get a little heat back from all that download. Real gentle, like just enough to start to feel juicy. Slowly lose the curve in the lumbar, only to increase it on the kick.
the more we activate the ribs to be specific, the more the shoulder blades come up, the more that decreases the lumbar curve. But then extending the legs reactivates the lumbar ordosis, the curvature of the lower spine. We dance with that. Trying to flatten the spine and trying to recurve the spine from the core. Same side rib contraction, lift same side shoulder blade. Start to put the twist on it. Put a spin on it. They start to burn. You baby bridge up. Stretch the core. Fortify the back. Good. Bring your knees towards your shoulders. Pardon me. Make sure your legs are super wide. Don't bring your knees together. Don't tuck the tail. Let it drop from the open hips to release the, lump, the lower back. Let the sacrum push into the ground. Reset the arch from the base. Beauty. Arm lock again, outer hip, inner seat, inner heel. Um, pulling the knees to the ground, pressing the sacrum down. Some people extend the legs, but don't care. And again, sacrum down, but that's, you know, beautiful. I'm going to hold my ankles, palm up. I'm going to bring my thumb with my index, bring my feet together. So I went from holding my feet to just holding my ankles. When I bring, then I kind of kick away and lean back, get that long upper spine to the neck. Oh. And the shoulder blades pulled towards the ground. Oh, head towards the ground. Oosh. Get that collar spread, that clavicle. All right, reverse lace lock overhead, maybe. Reverse lace lock, backs of fingers interlace. Thumbs, then they pull the joints open, the thumbs, pads press to activate inner arm and beyond to inner core. A lot of shoulder joint there, so good. This is external shoulder, internal wrist, big time. Regular lace is internal shoulder. It's a nice stretch, it's just a different stretch. Reverse lace is total outer shoulder, inner wrist. Very smart spiral, reverse technology. All right, big time joint release. And underarm and chest stretch to take pressure off the neck. Then we to go it one more time. Navel towards the spine. Uh, in training uh, or in a workshop or teacher's training, we can also talk about modifications, special needs, props, feet on the wall, bolster under the back, how to slowly re regenerate or recover. Um, remind me later, we'll get into that if you like. But anyway, for now, we're going to shift to bicycle, a uh, shift to scissors, straight legs. So bicycle is the warm up because bent leg right, is gentler on the back. And then we straighten the legs. Hold your head if your neck is sore or stop and stretch your neck. De release the tension that's making the pain. Unblock the channel. If you're good, you're good. Then get your scissors off. <laughs> Try to keep your navel ribs in. Then go down and twist. Then release into boxer's prayer. And cross strike. Actually pull the pain out of the lower back. Stretch it out. Try to put your elbow to your hip. Get the pain out of the back. 
That's the rib supporting the lumbar. As you tone up, the stretch out, release the toxins and tension of our detox. Action. Cross your leg and pull it down. You can stay there a long time. I just do the other side in case you didn't see what I did. Stay there a long time, don't care. Eventually, I just, I just crossed the ankle outside the knee and I just pulled the leg down, that's all. Yeah. That's the opposite of Garuda. Garuda has structural information. It's not just a sexy, fun balancing pose, but in therapeutic work like Iyengar, the Garuda stabilizes the pelvis and the sacrum to not move when you rotate the lumbar, just like we did in our standing twist. Um, so that would be opposite of this. So when you just cross, hook, and pull, so juicy. But the technology of the more structurally st stable version would be if you, let's say, for example, if I crossed and didn't pull down, but crossed completely and hooked behind the calf, the leg that's on top, the leg that's on the bottom goes down. You go the other way. And that would, for whatever reason, through nature, would stabilize the pelvis in its lateral position or its forward position, according to your chest bone. But then when you twist it back, sacrum and, and pelvis are locked in from the leg structure of Garuda, of eagle. So then when you twist, you get proper lumbar rotation and lower quadratus lumborum release, tension release without twisting the sacrum and protecting the nerves. Beautiful. So it might be a little bit more of a complete stretch than you're used to because you're so in it. Beautiful. Um, yeah. So I uh, think counter spiral in the Garuda full mudra of arm and leg. I think if one leg is on top, the other side arm is on top. Completely counter reverse counter spiral from opposite extremes. Total structural in integrity for support. So say if my left leg's on top, my right arm's on top. And then I'm in it. Any Iyengari can correct me on that. If you see this link later, like Deiki Sensei is an Iyengari. Could be wrong on that. Does feel right at the moment. I'm going to try to push my sacrum down, arch my lower spine to, to stretch the low, lower spine and sacrum, L5S1. I'm increasing the arch in my back, which is pushing the sacrum into the ground and lifting my ribs slightly. Beautiful, and release. Oh, and we'll finish today with the other side, if you like. Okay. So, if one leg is on top, you cross completely the thighs, you close the gap between the thigh, you try to hook your toe behind the calf if possible. So if one leg is on top, the opposite arm is on top. Okay, yeah. You relax your one foot into the ground. Allow your face to go kind of into your bicep, close to your elbow, to so your center line. You allow the breath to release the lumbar spines, compression naturally, slowly.
I like the opposites. Just feels like a better stretch. It feels more structurally stable. Opposites on top. Anyway, you decide from your experience what's best. You will know when you get there. Take rest. My Guruji Joyce never said take Shavasana. He always said take rest because he knew what Shavasana was. Advanced mastery over life and death. Stopping of the breath, stopping of the heart in a healthy conscious state. Just take rests. and rest, regenerate, recover. Please take a long shavasana, however much time you have to regenerate, restore. I'll say namaste and encourage you to stay. Sona mama, as you are. <clears throat> Namaste. Oh. Santi, Santi, Santi. Hare Om. Namaste.